Well, I posted a couple of photos of a charge case build I was completing as a lockdown project. I got loads of emails and questions about it. So I decided I'd do this video that details how I built this, my ultimate charge case. And for me, it's the details that are important with a build like this. The charge cases are pretty easy to build, but I like to get the details right. And I want something that I'm totally happy with, which may be different to what you want. Whatever, I'll show you how I built this, and you can choose to do something similar, or just borrow my ideas, or ignore them if you want. So, why is this my ultimate charge case? Well, I can charge pretty much anything with this up to 6S at 1000 watts, either out in the field or on the bench at home. And I can charge up to four batteries at once in parallel without any balance boards. I can even use it for my DJI drone batteries when I'm on a commercial job. And there's a USB outlet on here that means I can charge anything that needs USB 5 volts like phones or tablets or even this USB mini charge hub. Hello and welcome to the Worldly Black channel. In here there's two Toolkit RC M6 D chargers. I found these to be the most usable and reliable mid-range chargers that I've ever used. They're not too expensive and each unit can charge two batteries at up to 250 watts on each channel and anything up to 6S. Now I don't tend to parallel charge too much these days, but I did want the option. And this is mains powered, so you can just plug it in a wall socket, there's internal supplies, or you can power it off something like this, an external battery. And that's very useful when I'm out in the field. But when I'm on a commercial job, because I can charge DJI batteries on this, I generally tend to have a generator with me, so I can just power it off the mains input which is down here. So, what can I charge on here? Well, pretty much anything. In fact, I've designed this to charge all the batteries that I would ever want to use. And there's quite a range. So, as you would expect, you could charge regular LiPos, anything up to 6S, like this guy here. I've got a 4S. I could be charging another 6S over here. I could even be charging a 1, 2 or 3S over this side and they will all be charging in parallel. I could also charge up things like this, no problem at all. There's plenty of power in the power supplies that are buried in here to allow me to charge this up. And there's enough power in these M6Ds. I've also put an XT30 connector in parallel with the XT60 on here. Generally the outputs on these have just got XT60s, but that means I can just charge up anything that's got an XT30 on it, it's very convenient. And what else can I do? Ah, let me just show you this first. The other thing I've done to make this as convenient as possible, that's the mains lead. I've got this little thing up here, she's got all my charge leads in. A whole load of stuff and I'll show you what they all are in a minute. I've got a whole load of extension pieces, these are for charging phantom batteries, those are for charging Mavic batteries. I've got a little uh, smart smoke saver stopper here, that's Firefly one, that's very good, you want to get yourself one of those. But it's very convenient to know that you've got everything in here when you pick up the case, even the mains power supply. So, let me see. I've got a whole load of different leads They've all basically got XT60s on. Now the great thing about these Toolkit RC chargers is they've got a dedicated output for different types of DJI batteries. So you can select to charge a P4P battery. So just plug that in there, plug this in here, and I can charge four of those up in parallel without any problem at all. It's also got a setting for Mavic Pro battery, so I've got a little Mavic Pro adapter here. Just plug that in there. I like to charge four of those in parallel if I wanted to, so you don't have to wait for one to finish, then the other to charge with the sort of regular DJI charging hubs. 
So that's very convenient indeed. What else can I do? Ah, yes. Now, there's also um, the five volt USB output on here. That's the output that's normally on the top left of the M60 charger. So if I wanted to charge up some Ma Mini 2, Mavic Mini 2 batteries, I can just plug that in there. Perfect. Or anything that needs five volts, basically. And that's also the input that allows you to flash the firmware on this M60. And what else have I got? Ah, yes. So with this lead here, I can plug that in there. I can also charge up my controller for my Phantom or for my FPV goggles. That's absolutely perfect. And that's all enabled by the fact that there is a dedicated DJI output on these chargers. Also, if I wanted to charge 1S, which is a bit of a pain in the neck, to be honest, I've just made up this very simple board here. And what this does is it's got a socket here. I haven't actually got enough here. But if you put four 1S batteries in here, it puts 4S, gives you effectively 4S. So you can just plug that in there, plug that in there. Select 4S on your M60 on here and you can charge those up as well. And what else have we... Ah, yes, there is something else that we can charge as well. These batteries. These are the batteries that are used on Crystal Sky, which I use on my Phantom and my Inspire and my Mavic. And these are also the same batteries that are used in the DJI flight controller that comes with the goggles. And you get a charger for that. And you can just simply use the same lead that you use for charging the controller, plug that in there. Very convenient. And just a reminder, you can power this off the mains or I could be doing all that charging off one of these, just plugged in there. Obviously you've only got limited power on a battery. And the way this works is there's fans in the DC supply and there's fans on this end of the M60. These fans are forcing air into the case when there's power applied and it pushes all the hot air out the sides here. These ones here, to be honest, they don't not really need it. I think I could have got rid of those. And this big switch on the top here switches between external power. I was powering that off there. There you go. Or if I switch it over to there, it powers off the mains and there's a, an outlet on the side here. And building one of these charge cases, it really isn't difficult because you, all you're really doing is extending all the connectors, all the inputs and the outputs on these chargers and mounting them through this front panel. And you end up having everything in one sort of easy to use case. And you can build this however you want, but for me, I wanted something that feels engineered and not just thrown together. And the hardest part really is fathoming out what components you want to use for your charger and what you need to charge and what your budget is. And there's plenty of scope to do this on a budget if you want, or you can go completely mad, it's up to you. And then you need to find a suitable case to put everything in. I've selected this Nanook case, which I think is superb. And you'll need a panel to mount all the components in. I'm using two of these Toolkit RC Dual M60 chargers. You've seen me review these on the site before, and I love them, they're fantastic. To power them, we've got a couple of HP server power supplies, providing the DC input to these. Now, these supply 12 volts at 80 amps peak each. And you can get these pretty cheap on eBay. Why use something like this? Well, if you price up 24 volt 30 amp DC power supplies that are anywhere near the same quality as these, they're gonna cost you hundreds. And you can get these on eBay or refurbished from specialist suppliers for about 20 pounds each. 
The 1200 watt version of these is extremely popular for Bitcoin serving miners. But I had these two 800 watt versions left over from another project and they're more than enough for this charge case. I've designed a whole bunch of 3D printed parts to neatly hold XT60 and XT30 connectors in the front panel of the case and I've laser cut these little trays to hold the chargers. I've got a couple of 60mm DC powered fans and loads of M3 and M4 nuts, bolts and washers plus a whole load of different gauge wire to connect everything up. The case I'm going to be using is this Nanook 915. Nanook are a Canadian company and you can get these worldwide. They're fantastic cases and they're much cheaper than the equivalent Pelly cases. And they come in a great range of colours as well and they look just much more modern. Not like dated Pelly cases. And this is about the smallest case that you can get all these components in. And one of the things I really like about this are the double latches, those are on all the pulley cases like this. You have to flick that down to get it open, very nice and secure. Lastly we've got the front panel that we're going to mount all the gubbins into. Spaces here for all the connectors and the switches, fans and the chargers themselves. Now there's loads of ways that you can make this but I designed this one so it can be cut on my laser cutter but you can cut it by hand if you want. I know this looks like carbon sheet, but it's not. It's actually three millimeter black acrylic. And I've stuck this carbon look film on top and it looks fantastic. Using carbon would be a pain because it's difficult to cut and it's conductive. So you've got a load of other things to think about. This technique works really well and looks awesome. And I'll show you how I made this in detail in a minute. And I'll leave links to all these components that I've used in the description and some alternatives for different budgets, as well as all the STL files for the 3D printed parts and the DXF for the front panel. Now, fortunately, Nanook provide CAD drawings for all their cases, so designing a panel to fit all the components in is pretty straightforward. I laser cut the panel from three millimeter black acrylic, but first I've applied some simulated carbon fiber film. Remove the protective film from the acrylic sheet and wet it with some soapy water. Cut a piece of carbon film to fit and wet that as well. Lay the film on the acrylic and squeeze out the water until it's totally smooth and dry. And it's a good idea to leave this at room temperature for a few hours before you start cutting. Then put it in your laser cutter and you end up with this fantastic carbon look panel that's ready to use. These two 12 volt power supplies need to be wired in series to get the 24 volts needed to power the M6D battery chargers. Now, 28 volts would have been better, but 24 volts is perfectly fine for my use. But first, there's a bit of prep that we need to do on them. Now, the first thing I like to do when you buy them, you get a whole load of clips and handles and all sorts of things. I like to strip all that off. So all we've got is the bare power supplies. And to get them working, you need to link a couple of the edge connectors together so that when you put power on this, it will actually power up. If you don't do this, they just don't turn on. Now these DPS 800 GB 800 watt ones just need a simple link wire soldering between pins 31 on this side and 34 on the other side. If you get the DPS 1200 FB, that's a 1200 watt power supply, it needs a 470 ohm resistor soldering between pins 33 and 36. And once you've done that, you need to test them, plug it in, make sure that it's turning on and that you've got 12 volts across the output pins. Now 
Now you might think that to get 24 volts from these two power supplies, you just wire them in series. But you can't just do that without isolating the case of this top power supply from the negative output on the board. Let me explain. So each of these power supplies is the case on the input side. If we look at the mains input on here, for safety reasons, that's connected to the case. And if we look at the output, this is negative and that's positive 12 volts. The negative pin on here is also connected to the case and that's all perfectly fine and as it should be. But there's a problem. Let me try and explain. So if we have this as our ground, so we have naught volts down here and we connect that to the negative, so that's the positive 12, so that's plus 12 volts, that's naught volts, that's plus 12 volts. If we connect this to here, like that, and then we take our connection at the top there, we've got plus 24 volts. Okay, but there's an issue. 12 volts here means there's 12 volts here, and if that connector, that pin on that connector is connected to this case, that means you've got 12 volts DC running through here which is connected to the earth on your consumer unit where the mains comes in. That's going to blow your consumer unit, it's going to blow a fuse or something, so that is a problem, you can't just do that. The way to fix this is to isolate the pin, the negative pin on here, from the case. So, as I said before, the ground on here is connected to this one. This one I've modified, it is no longer connected. Now you're not compromising the safety of these power supplies. All you're doing is removing the connection between the case and the DC zero volts or ground on here. You're not disconnecting it from the mains input on here. So it's still safe. Now, all you need to do to do this, let me get that one out of the way, is if you look at this power supply, which is standard, you will see, and I'll do a close up of this, that the PCB on here is connected via a metal standoff, which is connected internally to that connector on there. What you need to do is basically replace that metal connector with a plastic one. Just a plastic regular standoff. You'll need to pull the whole supply apart. There's only a few screws on here. And take the innards out, replace those two metal standoffs. You just drill them out and replace them with plastic ones. And then you just put it all back together taking care that you put everything back where it should be. Now, there are loads of videos on YouTube about how to do this, but if you want me to do one, let me know in the comments and I'll do one. Now, it, it'll take you about an hour to do, it's not very difficult. Once you've done that, you can wire these up in series, check all your earths and power, and then put some power input on here and check that you've got 24 volts coming out the top. And you're now ready to start putting everything in the case and wiring it up. Carefully cut a hole in the side of the case to mount the IEC mains connector. I designed these brackets to hold an XT60 and an XT30 connector and the 7 pin balance plug. These basically duplicate the charge ports on the M6D, so you'll need four of them, one for each channel. I've used a piece of Vera board to mount the pins and the balance port extender cable and I've used some JST PCB connectors that I've soldered to the Vera board and removed the plastic header, just leaving the pins behind.
M3 threaded inserts are pushed into the bracket by heating them with a soldering iron. Now, don't let the soldering iron get too hot. About 200 degrees C is about right for PLA, but it does depend on what filament you've used to print these with. Then solder a seven-way balance cable to the Vera board. The XT60 connectors and the PCB are just super glued onto the brackets. Solder some cables onto the XT connectors and make up a small harness to plug into the M6 D charger. Um, when you made one of these, there's just another three to go. Right, we've got the two power supplies bolted to the case, which is nice. The input side is wired up for the mains, connections on the side here. And then I've got a chocolate block here, which I'm just going to use as a convenient place to wire all the other connections in. But before we start anything, I'm going to just check that we have got the power that we need. So let's plug that in. Good, it's encouraging it started up. LEDs are on, you can't see them, they're down here. Okay, so let's have a look. 24 volts. Well, 25.3. There is a bit of variance in these. Actually, 25 volts is better for us. And then I've got to power these 12 volt fans as well. So I've taken a spur off here for 12 volts that I can connect those up to. There we go. That's awesome. Right. Unplug that. And that can go down here for the minute. Right, wiring up the panel, it's all pretty straightforward and as I've said before we've got a couple of the M6Ds, these are held on a couple of um, laser cut acrylic sheets and I've got 32mm standoffs on here. I could have 3D printed something but to be honest that took about one minute to cut. If I'd 3D printed a tray to hold this it would have probably taken about five hours, something like that. So laser cutting is a much better option for this. Piece of neoprene which I've super glued to the bottom, that just gives it a bit of squidge there and make sure it's pressing up against the front panel quite nicely. What else we got? We've got our four extender pieces which I made earlier as you saw and these are just extending out these connectors on here. So because it's a dual, you've got two outputs, so we've got two of these. And I've paired up an XT30 with the XT60 so I can easily charge LiPos that have got an XT30 on them. And the balance port is here. That's good. What else have we got? Ah, yeah, I've got a couple of these. I'll put the other one. It's around here somewhere. Find it a second. So I'm using these ready-made up USB extenders to extend the 5 volt output and this is also where you can update your firmware so these are really cheap I'll leave a link to those in the description and the other bits that we've got are let's see got a couple of fans here which are going to force air into the case so it comes out the vents at the side which I'll show you in a second uh, it's not that one, that's one of my spare one. This is the real one. I've just put a couple of connectors on here so that I can wire those up to the chock block. Makes it easier to take the whole front panel off. That's good. Goes out of the way. And this is a little wiring loom that I've put together for the power. Now, you may be wondering what this switch is. It's a toggle switch. 
What this means is that I can use the input. So on these chargers, this input here would be connected to the power supplies that are in the case. But if I wanted to power the whole case from a separate LiPo, when I'm in the field, if I haven't got my generator with me, let's say I'm using one of these, I can power these off this, no problem at all. So I want to be able to have the option to power it internally from the power supplies or from an external LiPo connected to these XT60s. And this switch here simply flicks between internal supply and external supply. And in the middle it's off. And I've pre-wired all this with, um, I've used 10, 12 gauge AWG wire for that. Uh, I've pre-made those up and measured them because it just makes it easier. I've got a whole bunch of M3 and M4 dome head bolts, which I'll be using, and some washers, various bits and pieces, some grills for the fan. So, uh, I suppose I better start putting this together. And most of this is fairly boring, so I think I'll do this as a time lapse. Go time lapse. <coughs> ah. One thing I forgot, <laughs> the front panel. There we go, it's beautiful. It's so nice when you see these mounted through here. Looks like a proper bought one. And one thing I would suggest is if you're going to use dome head bolts on here, don't tighten them up too tight because this is only film. This is not carbon, so it may tend to twist the carbon on there. I find if I leave this overnight at room temperature, it gives it plenty of time for this carbon film to adhere nicely to the acrylic. And if you don't go mad and tighten it up too tight, just nip them up, then these work beautifully. Right, go time lapse. I'm glad I'm in here. It's snowing. Let me just... <laughs> that is fantastic. Snow! I'm not going to be going out flying today. <laughs> fantastic, it's snowing out there. I can't fly though, and I've got a flying job tomorrow, so hopefully the weather's going to be good. Right, let's try and get this in the case. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go into time lapse again. Whee!
So there we go, all bolted together. When you've got it together, the best thing to do is to check that all the ports are wired up correctly and everything's working as it should. So if I turn the power on, so that's powered up the power supplies. And I've selected internal power. Everything powers up, which is good. And I just plug this in here and make sure. Yeah, all the balance ports are connected. Actually, that's not a good thing to do, is it? Let's go to success to check out everything. Here we go. Okay, so those are all working correctly. And I guess we should check that the USB connectors are working. Let me just go and grab something. Right, I'm back. So, got a Mavic Mini charge hub here. Oh, we'd have to buy the right connector, wouldn't it? There we go. Right, plug that in there. And plug that in there. Excellent, so it's it's charging from that socket. Check this one over here. Perfect, so that is working as expected. One thing that is a good idea is to make up some extension leads. Well, I've got a whole load of these 4S1s like this and I've got a whole load of XT60 and XT30 extension leads. You can put smaller batteries on here, but if you want to put them on the, on the ground over here, then you'll need some extension leads. Okay, so that's all working from the internal supply. So let's turn that off. Let's try powering it up from the external supply. So this is the external DC input. Let's try this one first. Excellent. So, again, let's just try this. So this is just a, what have I got here? This is a 10,000 milliamp hour hour 4S battery. It's been kicking around for ages. Date on that, 1st of March 2016 used to use that on my old Taro 680. So let's check this works. Yep, so this 6S 1250 milliamp hour LiPo is charging off this 4S LiPo over here. Very good. Now you know this is all working and everything's wired up correctly. What you need to do is plug a load of batteries in here and power it off the main supply and charge them at full whack. Basically what you're trying to do is soak test this and make sure that nothing is getting too hot in here and that the fans are pushing out the air and making sure that the power supplies aren't getting too hot. And also just keep a nose out for smells and nasty things going on and check underneath to make sure that the power supplies aren't heating up too much. So that's it, my ultimate charge case. And although I've made a few charge cases over the years, it's been fun getting everything that I ever need into one relatively small case. And I'm totally happy with this. If there's anything I've missed out or you need more detail on, just leave a question in the comments and feel free to download and use any of the parts I've designed for your own charge case build. I've left download links to all the parts that I've used in the description below. And if there's enough interest, I'll make the laser cut front panel and 3D parts available on my website. As always, thanks for watching. And if you found that useful, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if you want to see more like this, remember to subscribe and hit the bell 
to get notified when I post new content. I'll see you next time. Thank you.